guys. He's <laughs> a baby. I'm still wounded. <laughs> I fully think that I have only ever been one step away from being a Dark Academia character. Hello my loves and welcome back to another vlog. Let's talk Dark Academia because... Because Babel. This was very kindly sent to me by the publisher Harper Voyager and I am so grateful because as a Dark Academia fantasy book this was one of my most anticipated books of the year. And oh my god, this book is singing to my soul. <laughs> Before we get ahead of ourselves, this is a book that is very deeply rooted in topics of colonialism, of translation, of culture, and everything that all of those things combined inhabit and bring into the equation because this is the sort of dark academia book which really just rips out the very root of academia and shows the brutality of it and the violent side of seeing information as a resource that can be gained and taken from different cultures and lots of different topics like that. So the more simplified synopsis of this book is that we're following a guy called Robin Swift who was born in Canton and when he's very 
very young he is basically taken across to England by a wealthy professor and raised by him with a huge focus on studying translation and so when he gets to university age he ends up going to Oxford University and the Tower of Babel which at first seems like an absolutely wonderful place, a safe haven for him but he does eventually start to see everything that I've just mentioned previously. One thing I will address already the pronunciation of Babel or Babel. R.F. Kwan calls this Babel. The British pronunciation is Babel and I do find it highly ironic that there is a difference in pronunciation with a book that is so heavily targeted towards language and how words are formed across different languages and stuff so just gonna put that out there. <laughs> but I am currently 300 pages into this book. I have around 200 pages left but I just wanted to let you know that I am absolutely obsessed with this book. As I said before, this one is singing to my soul because this is a Dark Academia book that I fully anticipated RF Kwan being able to do because you get to see lessons and you see the full scope of them, you see how in depth an actual university lecture would go and I love it, I love it so much. It wouldn't be for everybody in the same way that university wouldn't be for everybody but it is for me, especially because even though I didn't study translation myself, I have had these very conversations in some of my own lectures in my own dissertation while at university because my own dissertation was on the retellings of ancient Greek mythology and translation work came into that as a form of retelling a story because every translation is a form of retelling the story based on one person's bias and interpretation of said words and that conversation happened within this book and so much more that I just could relate to it in a way that I didn't expect to and it made my little academic heart sing. <laughs> This book also pinpoints how language is just integral to every single aspect of life. Every other study that you could possibly do, language is an integral part of that. You couldn't do maths or science without the words to explain how these things are done. And so the importance of language is just really emphasised in this book and how that translates across different cultures and it's just fascinating. As I said it wouldn't necessarily be for everybody because it is very informative and I would say that when it comes to dark academia books and their general themes it is closer to the academia side at least currently than it is the thrilling side but there is a mystery aspect going on, there is a fantasy aspect. It's not heavy in the fantasy but there is an element of fantasy within it because there is a resource called silver which is being used to help society just kind of function a little bit more efficiently which is fueled by a form of magic based on words and translation and so that's where it all ties in but if you do go into this book expecting heavy fantasy I don't think you're quite going to find that but if you do go into it wanting the academic side of dark academia if you want the aesthetic of incredibly intense studies in a beautiful background of Oxford and things like that you're going to find it in this book. I do think as well that this just perfectly captures the love, the hate, the obsession that comes with being so invested in your studies, with knowing that academia as a whole is a flawed system and having all of these doubts about the basis of your academic studies but also loving your academic studies because you find it fascinating and just having that kind of conflict going on inside. It's really throwing me right back to my university days, so much so that <laughs> It almost hurts to read because my god was that a love and hate situation and this book just gets that perfectly. I fully think that I have only ever been one step away from being a Dark Academia character, I'm just saying. <laughs> I think had I met a group of equally unhinged people I could very well have recreated the secret history. Do with that information what you will. <laughs> but yeah, obsessed with this book. It's proven to be everything I would want it to be. Still have 200 pages to go, hoping to finish it this weekend. I'll keep you updated. <laughs>
guys. <laughs> My friends, this is the Dark Academia book you have been waiting for. I finished this close to midnight last night and I sat there in silence for at least 15 minutes before I started posting about it on my Instagram because I am just astounded. I am gobsmacked. I am shooketh. <laughs> I read the last 200 pages of this book all in one sitting. I started annotating as well, which you will have seen in the B-roll. I don't really have a system to it, it was just a case of me deciding at one point that I've pretty much wrecked this arc. <laughs> just in me taking it absolutely everywhere with me. So I was like, you know what? We might as well start annotating it as well because clearly I am loving this. And it got to a certain point where I even stopped annotating because I just couldn't stop reading for long enough to actually like make notes on anything. But oh my God, uh, oh. I have actually written a little bit of a review of my initial thoughts in the front of the book. So I'll just read this out as a kind of basis because I said that words cannot do with this book justice, which is highly ironic considering what the book is about. This book is everything I have longed for in a dark academia book. It presents the obsessiveness, the hatred, the comfort, the violence, and the fanatical cycle that can come with studying and genuinely loving something that much. And also the weird thrill that comes from achieving the kind of overworked student aesthetic. It presents a feeling of camaraderie with like-minded souls and the absolute conviction that everything else is immaterial compared to that. But it also presents many brutal truths and things that you just don't want to hear but you have to because this is the basis of everything. It confronts the cost of knowledge as a resource and where that comes from and the kind of taking of someone else's culture for the basis of your own knowledge. It covers the conflict between appreciation and appropriation but it also calls out the accepted web of deceptions that our society is based on that all of us just happily accept because it's easier to do so than to actually confront what's going on in the background. This book just does so much and <laughs> genuinely is something close to a masterpiece. I almost don't know how to comprehend this book. I feel like I need to go back and reread it to take it all in again and I probably still wouldn't get everything from it that I can, but in a good way, in a way that it means this is just full of boundless topics to explore, things that I can both relate to and not, but I think that this truly is the Dark Academia book that everybody has been waiting for and you do have little bits of fantastical elements in there as well to appeal to people who genuinely love a more fantastical academia side of things. And R of Kwong does not not. Oh my god, she does not. <laughs> she does not go easy on you, my loves, let me tell you. Jesus Christ. It got to one point where I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna make it through this book. <laughs> This is without a doubt a new favourite book. I honestly don't have a bad word to say about it. It's not going to be for everybody but it is definitely for me. Five stars through and through and I think that a lot of you guys are going to absolutely adore this one too so definitely get it pre-ordered if you haven't already and I cannot thank the guys over at Harper Voyager for sending me this book enough because New favourite book right here. I've had a great time reading this. I am also going to leave a link to Tanweir's review, who is Dark Fair Academia on Instagram, down below because they had some really interesting things to say about the colonialism aspect and the diversity aspect that I just personally cannot say much about from personal experience. So I'm gonna leave a link to that review down below, just in case you do want someone else's voice on this as well, who can speak on that better than I can. But yeah, absolutely adore it. I already want to reread it, but I also don't because I'm still wounded. <laughs> So with that being said, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Do let me know if you're excited for this book. Let me know what your favourite Dark Academia books are or if there are any that you're wanting to read that you haven't gotten to yet. If you've made it this far into the video, then leave the candle and scroll emoji. I'll put it in the title as well so you know which ones I'm on about because they're the ones I have been using every single time I've referenced this book anywhere and I feel like they're going to be used a lot over the next coming months when I talk about this book endlessly. So leave them down below if you've made it this far and in the meantime, I shall love you and leave you and let you get on with the rest of your day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find information to everything I've mentioned in this video, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.